Welcome back to another episode of the New Strength Way podcast, guys. Today I've got special guest Haley Crookshanks from Empowered Fitness and Nutrition up at Nelson Bay. Uh, Haley's just came in to visit, play around with some strongman toys, learn how to do some logs, some stones, and we thought while she was here for the day, we'd get her on the podcast. So welcome, Haley. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So to start off with, what we normally go through with our guests on the podcast is if you want to just tell people a little bit about yourself and your own story with what got you into training uh, and we'll go from there. Um, at the moment I've been training CrossFit for about two years um, but before that um, I was always so like active into sports everything like that. Um, I ended up in a really bad relationship um, that ended um, suddenly. Um, went through really really bad depression, mental health um, didn't know who I was without this person um, and just trying to find myself and a friend kind of was just like come on like come to the gym with me it's going to make you feel so much better like exercise just plays a major role in your mental health and how it supports you and um, yeah he kind of pulled me in and never looked back since then so that was just at a general gym I think it was like anytime fitness or something like that and we had just do some bodybuilding stuff and he's just like follow me and um, it kind of started from there. That's um, super cool and, and that's one of the things that we touch on all, all the time and like how important it is of like having somebody there to support you in, in that and that friend of yours obviously played a big part in bringing you in in that first place and mm -hmm. obviously also just showing you the way as well not going all right come to the gym and just like do whatever you want while I'm doing my workout. Yeah, no, he um, yeah, definitely showed me like what to do. Like, I think he was kind of making it up at the same time as well. But um, yeah, just that helped me so much with my confidence, like trying to find who I was again um, before, like post relationship. It was just, um, yeah. And like feeling confident in myself again, like uh, it was a massive drag for a long time and um, yeah, the, the weight slowly started increasing. I felt better about myself. Like I ended up um, telling him to come to the gym. Like if he was tired, I'm like, no, let's go. We're going to work out. Like, yeah, so it was really, really good. That's cool. And so obviously you mentioned before that you're doing, you're, you've been competing in CrossFit now, mm -hmm. doing a little bit of that side of stuff. Uh, how did your training evolve from that first point where you just started going in and doing those bodybuilding style workouts? Uh, like what's been your experience with that there? How did that move and shift over time? Um, so I originally grew up in the Southern Highlands in a small town called Robertson um, and I moved up to Nelson Bay to help open a home care company. Um, never been up there in my life, didn't know no one, met my housemates on roommate.com like two days before I moved up there um, and found out there was a CrossFit gym and I was seeing it on TV, wanted to know a little bit more about it um, and then fell into it like absolutely loved it the community there was so welcoming and um yeah all my friends are there now and um fell in love with it so much that I got asked to coach start like do my level one in coaching um and then as soon as I got that our CrossFit gym closed down right yeah so I um, didn't even get to teach a class which is um funny but um there was a group of us that was just like we can't let our community go. Like we built up such a fun vibe and family. Um, so yeah, a couple of, couple of us got together and we kind of started our own CrossFit gym up there now. Right, cool. And how long has that one been open for now? Uh, roughly six months, I think, so. Yeah, awesome. And, and let's touch on that sort of stuff that you, you brought in. Of, obviously there's a big difference between like your anytime fitnesses that you go to mm -hmm. uh, and then the small community gyms that I think CrossFit was probably one of the biggest ones that have boomed that culture and mm -hmm. uh, in the last sort of 10 years of how they've brought it in and like what was the difference between going there versus when you were going to Anytime Fitness with your friend before? Um, anytime Fitness like you just walk in people are doing their own thing they've got their headphones in they're in their zone it, like if I walked into it Anytime Fitness now I would not know anybody by name you wouldn't even really look at someone or say hey um, I felt like not disregarding any time fitness at all but I just felt there was no family or community yeah they, there. Have, a, they have their place for the right people obviously. yeah uh, yeah and I guess who, depends what you want yeah for sure uh, so what's the people I guess that like they're going going to these small community gyms and changing 
to that there. Obviously, you said that you then you met new friends, mm -hmm. like you're obviously in a new area. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what did that mean for you in, the, in that time? Like that obviously helped to, did it help you settle into living in a new town? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like I was working afternoon shift um, at a nursing home at that stage, so I'd go to the 9.30 CrossFit class, um, which was all basically mums and bubs, so, um, but it was just amazing, like walking in and seeing these amazingly strong, fit women that I've never seen like lift, um, like I've never seen Olympic lifts done like that before. Or these women were lifting like over a hundred kilos, and I'm like can hardly lift my um, body weight at that stage at all. And it was just so inspiring to see. And um, these these women that in the 9:30 class, they just became like second, third mums to me, and they were very. Um, like after it they're just like let's go to the beach the beach is just around the corner so we we grab our lunch from back home and then just go chill out at the beach until i had to go to work and it was just a really cool lifestyle to be a part of yeah cool yeah. it sounds like it kind of gave you like a, a new home away from home right? yeah yeah exactly yeah awesome uh and let's dive in on a little bit more on the transformation in yourself personally mm -hmm. uh from getting into training so you said that you, prior to that point, that you were struggling to kind of find out who you were as mm -hmm. a person with, without that relationship. And then you started to build your confidence through seeing the, the weights go, like your body change. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us more about that change that happened for yourself. Um, I kind of fell back in love with myself and accepting my body for what it is and like, um, finding out what my body could do, like pushing it to different levels, um, just surprising myself every week, like endlessly. Like still now, if I go into a gym and just do something, I'm just like, wow, I've never been able to do that before. Or, um, you know, just accepting like the journey that it's been on. Um, like I was, at the moment, if I look back, since starting my journey, I've put on nine kilos. And wow, you must have been small before you yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. You're only very small now. <laughs> any of the guys that are watching the video, like you'll obviously tell what I mean here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. Yeah, and I had a um, like nothing diagnosed or anything like that, but I had a really bad relationship with food as well. I was majorly like under eating. I was playing like top sport then as well. Um, what which, sports did you play? Um, I played soccer all my life, um, and then I've danced all my life. I went to a dance school for three years, um, training full time to be a dancer and stuff, but just the worst relationship in food. Like I did not know that food, like what it could do for you and how it can change your body. Like I always thought that if I wanted to lose weight or like, I just didn't love my body then that not eating was the answer because like I'd lose body fat or I would, um, you know, just be skinnier, I'd be happier in myself if I was smaller, blah, blah, blah. Like it just went on from there. And um, I actually got a nutrition coach for a while because when I first started CrossFit, I was working like uh, five days. I was so sick. Um, I tried to train five days a week as well. Um, my immune system was shot and I was probably eating maybe not even 1500 calories when I first started tracking and just had no energy at all, wasn't sleeping. My stress was like a major, at major levels. Like it was really, really bad, but that's how I lived because that's how I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. And let's talk about a few more of those changes that you made with that there that then started to have a bit of an impact, like a little bit more specifically, like what did you start to do with your food? Like what, mm -hmm. how did that change uh, from seeing that nutrition coach? Um, yeah, anything else that, because I think this will come into some really helpful, actionable points for maybe mm -hmm. some of the listeners who, who might be struggling with those same, uh, those same feelings or might resonate with your story that yeah. some of these pieces might be things that they could look into for themselves. So yeah. do you want to share a few of those things with us? Um, just like this new nutrition coach, like she didn't, didn't just like say, you need to eat this food. Like I'm going to put you on like a block diet of this, this and this. That's all you can eat in the day. It was like, I'm going to give you this amount of calories, um, try hit it if you can, like do like in between a bit of a range, like a range like a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but I just want you to feel comfortable and start eating a little bit more. 
And as soon as I started doing that, I had more energy. Um, my stress decreased because I was sleeping a lot better. Like I would get home from work, I'd probably get to bed about 11.30 and then I'd be up about six o'clock. So hardly any sleep. But after once I started um, eating a lot more, that sleep just became so much better. I wasn't as restless. It didn't take me like an hour to get to sleep. And I, um, she even like got me to do a really nice, I started a really nice um, like sleep build up. So when I got home, I put my lavender diffuser on in my room. I showered with a candle light and it just kind of like got you into the mood to be rest, like into a nice sleep mode kind of thing. And that now I can just sleep um, when I get to bed, like after work, I can just go in. I know my, my routine and I know that works for me. So I think it's just trial and error. Um, you end up knowing what works for your body. And once, it, like I went off track a little bit, but That's once right. you start You're eating, um, it just makes a, a major difference in your recovery as well. If you're trying to train your sleep, um, your body will just transform so much because you get comfortable like those carbs will give you so much energy and it'll just change um, Just yeah, I don't know. I can't even express how much it's changed my life and that was just increasing my food intake Yeah, one of the things that I talk with clients a lot of the time uh, Because there is this concept of like you have to always eat less. It's like yeah, the, and Eating less, obviously, within a small range is very useful for mm -hmm. when you do try to lose weight, but eating less all the time forever and like a lot less becomes mm -hmm. its own danger. Uh, but the concept that I always bring up is like, you're asking your body to do more while paying it less. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you when you look at it that way, it's like, oh, if you, if you got asked by your boss or something like that, it's like, hey, dude, I need you to stay back and do a double shift today. But I'm not gonna But pay I'm you. gonna not pay you for it. <laughs> you'd be like, yeah, now I'm going home to see you. Yeah. And that's a lot of the time what happens with your body. Your body just checks out and is like, not no, happening. man, we're, we're not going to perform. We're not going to get any better at this sort of stuff. We're not going to do all this stuff that you want me to because mm -hmm. you ain't giving me anything to work with. Exactly, here. yeah. Uh, so I think that's, that's definitely something that's super important for a lot of people to remember. Um, so let's transition into moving into coaching. Uh, we were speaking before and you said that you went through uh, Green Body, uh, who is actually Annalise that works for us. She went through and she actually used to train with Andy and the guys there uh, prior to when she started working with us. And mm -hmm. um, so those guys have been doing awesome stuff and producing a lot of awesome coaches coming out of that program there. But going into that there, what was sort of, I guess, the or what have been some of the lessons that you've found since moving into coaching? Uh, would have been some great experiences maybe or anything that you want to bring up there yeah um the people that i've met like even just through green body the people that i did my pt course with was like we're still friends now and we catch up all the time we train together um they're doing like amazing work themselves yeah. and it's just having that really nice supportive network around you um they can see your goals and push you towards it as well and encourage you um, yeah, we're actually talking with Mick about getting him on the podcast as well. Yeah, he mentioned he, uh, that. He jumped on after uh, after hearing Brendan the other day. <laughs> he's like, oh, let's make it happen. I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. So uh, he should be on soon too. Uh, and that's obviously how we've connected through uh, seeing you hanging out with uh, Brendan and Mick. So uh, He's yeah. doing a lot of good stuff with his strength and community work. So Yeah, yeah, he's definitely got a, a very like interesting pivot away from like what everyone else is doing that's mm. really really interesting so i'm looking forward to sitting down with him soon yeah uh, but keep on going with that uh um yeah so just like build on your skills there's so many like you've got google out there you've got youtube you've got so many courses there that you can just learn from and even like on instagram on facebook there's so many coaches out there that you you can just um take away what they're they've been producing um, you can learn so much from them and um, just you're not going to know everything as soon as you walk out that door with that certificate and if you don't know the answer that a client um, has asked you, that's okay, you don't have to know the answer but what you can do is just tell them like, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer but I'm going to find that out for you and do your very best to give that back to that person. You don't have, like, I put myself down for quite a while 
um, because I was like, that's it, I'm a PT now, I'm so good at this, blah, blah, blah. But I knew, not that I didn't know anything, but I still have, I knew that I had a lot, long way to go and I still do now. Like, you don't, you don't walk out there knowing absolutely everything, but as long as you're striving to keep learning and there's new things coming up every day, so. Yeah, I think you, uh, you hit the nail on the head with that there. It's, it's, there's definitely a, a phase in becoming a coach where you go from where you think you know a lot mm -hmm. to then you realizing that you know very, very little, but there's a lot of things that are opportunities for you to learn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think that's a, that's a very important part of a uh, coach's journey uh, for anyone is that point where it's like, all right, cool, well, I'm going to stop staying in my bubble and I'm just going to start exposing myself to different things and mm -hmm. reaching out to different people and uh, it's that's always it. cool when like somebody like yourself comes in today and has never touched strongman stuff before and then it's like just teach me how to do it man i'll just jump in and see how it goes and it was uh, fun thank you <laughs> that's all right uh so like those sort of things there are like and obviously given that i i'm doing something that not many people have access to the equipment for or anything like mm -hmm. that i always anytime that somebody reaches out and's like hey can i come and learn i'm like come on in right, let's just let's, let's teach you it. this sort of stuff uh, and a lot of this, like a lot of the strongman side of stuff doesn't have much application to what people can do in other things, given that they still, you can't just go pick up stones or well, you can probably go <laughs> down the road and try to pick up stones if you really want to. But, uh, yeah, like that sort of stuff, like it's, but it's a cool experience and it's a cool exposure to try to like see and test your body in different ways. So yeah. I think it's always cool when, when people are pretty open to learning and coming and seeking information off other people and yeah uh, and that's where like we're always trying to do the same thing it's like mm -hmm. that's why uh, Brennan and I hang out all the time or, or whenever we can because we're both yeah, fairly training. busy <laughs> uh, but it's like uh, that sort of opportunity gives us a chance to just catch up and then see what we can learn from each other yeah that's, that's awesome in those times and like don't be afraid to ask questions even if like you think the answer is going to be no that's okay like no is just I know. Like, yeah. ask questions. Reach out to people on Instagram. Reach out. Oh, I bug so many people. On Instagram. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Just do it. Like, what? What? Why is people like these days? We're so afraid of getting told no. Like, no is just a word. Yeah, definitely. And that's a huge thing. Is like being willing to seek out information and being willing with a with the answer that you don't want sometimes. Yeah. It's like, as much as like some people are busy and don't I can it's like hey dude can I come and train it's like I really can't do it at the moment so, yeah but sometimes you get that answer or uh or people sometimes just need like they've got their like secret ways and they keep their secrets to themselves and that's completely fine too because yeah. they, they, they've got to have that there but if you're not asking you're not going to get an answer if you're scared exactly. of one like of them saying no you're not going to get something out of it uh and most people in the fitness industry I find are very very good with sharing mm -hmm. uh, very few people keep keep all their cards to their sleeves. They like helping other people with that there. So yeah. they're always pretty willing for assisting coaches and anyone that contacts us coming that wants to come in and do shadowing or anything like that. We always try to facilitate it as best as we can. We might not mm -hmm. always be able to do it as a full placement uh, for them, but we can always try to give them some exposure somehow or, yeah. or get them in and around when we've got our, our own coaches training to give them a little bit of uh, education there. So, um, I know we mentioned beforehand within your business, you said that you've got quite an interesting uh, story with a client that you wanted to share. So uh, that really hit home with trying to find places like you did when you transitioned over to CrossFit and finding mm -hmm. somewhere that was cro uh, made you feel comfortable in training. So did you want to start sharing that story? Because I think that was really super cool. Yeah. Um, so I run Empowered Fitness and Nutrition, which is my personal um, training business that I run out of our CrossFit gym. Um, majority of my clients are women. Um, I run a women's only boot camp twice a week at the moment. Um, and I also have a few like PT clients that I see. Um, one of them is an amazing woman who I met over Instagram actually. She reached out to me um, and she's a transgender woman. Um, she always loved the gym before. She used to do CrossFit all the time um, before she transi transitioned. Sorry. Um, and now like She's like currently wearing a, a wig, trying to grow out her hair. She's just, her body is changing. She's on hormone tablets, everything like that, like just transitioning. Um, and I feel like blessed that she reached out to me, but I can give her a place to train, 
by herself, just one on one. Um, I have that opportunity to give that to like the clients at the moment, like open gym just for me and her to work. Like I'll PT her, um, but she can feel comfortable. She doesn't have to wear her wig. She doesn't have to wear her makeup and she just comes in and feels comfortable and we can train one on one where otherwise she wouldn't have that experience at all. And she would, she loves running. She goes running by herself. Um, but just having those open doors for um, her to come in and feel comfortable to train is just, I feel blessed to be able to give that to her. And um, if there's anyone else like looking for an opportunity to come train, but you don't feel comfortable at a gym, like I can do one-on-one -on -one with you in a private gym, private gym access. And I just want you to have a good time, like work towards your goals. Um, she's got some goals she's looking forward to. Um, she's been working really, really hard and we're looking at her nutrition as well now. So, but just falling in love with her body as a woman too. Yeah, it's, it's been an incredible journey so far to see where she has come from so far. Yeah, and that's, that seems like it's obviously like the big thing there is that you've made a space that's comfortable for her mm -hmm. to be ready to do things at, at her pace and not feeling pressured into having to jump into a class or anything like that at mm -hmm. the point in time. And I think that hits home with like another thing that we talk about with, with a lot of young coaches that come by us is there's three things that you have to do exceptionally well to be a world-class coach. And mm -hmm. part of that is the first bit is having the nuts and bolts of like knowing how to train and uh, knowing how to coach people through movements and the, those sort of things that that's kind of expected. Mm -hmm. But then the next piece from there is then being able to create relationships where people feel comfortable and at home with you and then also being able to create that into a community environment there is the third uh, major piece of that one there. And I think that's something that's super important that if people don't feel comfortable in a gym setting just by themselves yet is then probably the easiest way to, to get into that next step is finding somebody who, help, who can help make you feel comfortable in that process. Mm -hmm. And that sounds very similar to what you've been able to do uh, for your client there. So that's super cool. Yeah, it's been it's been really good. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so Haley, thanks for coming on the show. Is there anything else that you want to touch on uh, before we finish up today? No, but no? yeah, everything I think has been said. Awesome. No worries. If the uh, what's the best way for people to find you? Instagram, social media, anything like that. Um, yeah, on Instagram, it's just Empowered Fitness and Nutrition. Same with Facebook, um, and I do have a website, um, EmpoweredFit.com.au. Cool. And you guys are whereabouts in the Bay? Are you guys. Um, Salamander Bay, so George Road, the old industrial area out there, so 7 George Road. Awesome, cool. So if you've got any listeners that are living up that way and want to reach out, then uh, that's the best place to find uh, Haley there, and that's it. We'll see you guys on the next episode, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.